All right, let's talk about study techniques. These are very, very important. And um, they can potentially be different for different people. So your job is to figure out which one works for you. And hopefully by the end of the semester, you will have figured that out. So 37% of first year students had difficulty developing effective study skills. So that's, you know, that's 40%, almost half. Remember when you're reading a textbook, that's different than say reading a newspaper or a novel or something, a uh, post on, on uh, Instagram or something. You have to read slowly to understand, to comprehend. And you may have to read certain passages uh, more than once to uh, understand them. When you want to read with concentration, it's important to find a place where you can concentrate and focus. Uh, normally we can only read for about 45 minutes at a time before we need breaks. So be sure to take little 10 to 15 minute breaks where you can get up, walk around, stretch your legs, etc. Set realistic goals, like trying to read 20 pages before lunch or something like that. Make sure you look up unfamiliar uh, words. There's usually glossaries at the back of textbooks that will help you with the jargon that is specific to that subject matter. And you can always uh, preview, mark in your book, read with concentration, and then review after you've read it uh, once. The key to remembering what you read is to understand it, not merely just memorizing it. Memorization works only for very short-term memory, but if you want to really learn something, you need to understand it. And again, you can get the big picture of what's going on in the book by reading introductory paragraphs, headings and subheadings, and it's good to mark in your textbook, but think about what you're going to mark first. Don't just mark uh, Willy nilly and then realize that uh, it's not doing you any good. So you can summarize in the margins and connect things via arrows, highlight critical information, write questions that you can ask your professor or other students, and again, identify studying strategy that, that works for you. You can do something like this, setting up a, a flow chart or a concept diagram that will help your understanding. There's the Cornell Lecture Note System, or also called the Recall Format, where your page looks something like this. Your class notes are in the lined part of the page there, main ideas that are summarized on the left, and summarize, summary and questions on the bottom. There's the SQ3R method as well, which I think would work really well. Where the S stands for survey, so you look over the the part you're going to read first, looking at subheadings and headings and figures and so forth. Then from that, develop some questions, either in your mind or write them down, and then read the material, try and recite the material, and review the material. So that's what the three R's are, read, recite, and review. You can also annotate your textbook. Like it says there, I guess I don't need to really read that for you. And this is what a marked up book page looks like with notes in the margins and certain things underlined or highlighted in the text. Flashcards, these are great for studying vocabulary terms and you get a lot of those in biology. Uh, there's even a, uh, an app apparently that works like um, uh, flashcards and it will uh, quiz you more on the ones that you uh, do uh, worse on. It's great for content heavy courses like anatomy courses, like organic chemistry courses, zoology courses, botany courses, things like that. And it's good to form study groups and study with other people if you really can remain focused on the material and not just let it turn into a bit session or a gossip session. But 91% of first year students studied with other students. So that's nine out of 10. So that works well for most people. But again, you need to stay focused. Diagnosing error patterns. But before we go over this, I'd like to say that the um, pictures or figures in a textbook are expensive to put in there. So that means that the ones that are in there are important. So don't uh, just ignore them, but 
understand them, read the captions, and look at the picture or graph to figure out what it's trying to tell you because the fact that it's there in the first place means it's illustrating an important point. And when you get a test or an exam back, and you, especially if you didn't do as well as you wanted to, you can follow these four steps to try and figure out how you can be better next time. Why did you miss the question? Did you just not know it or misread or misunderstand it? Part of being prepared, of course, is being able to answer the questions in the time allotted, usually 50 minutes for a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, 75 minutes for a Tuesday, Thursday class. Um, if you didn't know the material, where did it come from? The textbook, a video, class notes? Or did you just misread the question because you were strapped for time or you stayed up too late and you're sleep deprived and therefore more likely to make mistakes? And then of course, what must you do differently next time? And usually that means studying more. You don't like to study because it's work, but that's the job of a college student. So I hope that was helpful and please figure out which study method works best for you.